I've exported so many videos through the Insta360 Studio. I've played around with all of the export settings and today I'm gonna to go through what I think are the best ones. Okay, so once you've got your clip on your timeline and you're ready to export, there's two things we need to check and decide before we actually hit the export button. Uh, the first one is if you go to the stabilization tab at the top and make sure flow state stabilization is turned on. Uh, if it's turned off, when you play it back, the clip will be all shaky like this, which might be the look you're going for, but I would assume nine times out of 10, it's not. So make sure it's turned on. So when you play it, it's nice and smooth. Uh, the next uh, decision you need to make is to do with the color. So if you go down to media processing and then under image processing, you can see color plus and clarity plus. Uh, essentially turning color plus on will enhance the color uh, like that. But the thing with this is if you're planning on doing any color correction yourself later, it's near to impossible to do if you've got color plus turned on. So you need to decide, uh, do you want to export it with it off and do color correction yourself or export it with this enhanced color, which means you probably won't be able to do any changes yourself later. If you think it's too much, you can change the strength using the uh, slider below. Um, and if you don't want to mess around with the color and you just want to sharpen the image, then turning Clarity Plus on will do exactly that. Again, if you think it's too much, you can change the strength using the slider. You can't have both of them on at the same time. So as you can see, uh, it's either one or the other. The thing to note about either of these options though are I would only use them if you've got a well lit clip. So this example clip that I'm gonna be using today, which you'll probably be sick of seeing by the end of this video, but the reason I've chosen it is because it hasn't got much movement to the clip and it's a well lit clip, which means you can just focus on the detail in all of the examples that I'm gonna go through. But if I go to to a more dark clip like this um, and I play that and this is it normal with nothing turned on you can see now actually clarity plus was turned on then if I turn on color plus look at this it's just not good I mean it's all grainy everywhere uh, it's it's I don't think this is even usable if you was to export it like this with color plus on and it's the same with clarity plus it just adds a lot of uh, grain and noise around it um, so really these two options should only be used if you've got a, uh, a well lit clip by the way before we continue if you can hear the fan from my laptop it is the fan from my laptop apologies but every time the Insta360 studio is running uh, the laptop just goes absolutely mad so yeah Anyway, once you've made those decisions, uh, I personally keep both of them off because um, I like to do any color correcting myself later. So yeah, I'm gonna keep them off for this. Um, now you're ready to hit the magic export button in the bottom right. Once you hit that, the export settings box will pop up um, and make sure export reframed video is uh, selected at the top. Change the file name to whatever it is you want and the file path to whatever it is you want it to be saved. Uh, skip preset parameters, we'll come to that in a minute, and then you wanna move down to bitrate. So bitrate basically means uh, the amount of information that is processed per second in the video. Now, I've done so many uh, example exports uh, using various different bit rates. Um, and I mean, you can choose anything from like one all the way up to 200. Uh, now, you might be thinking the best thing to do in a situation like this is literally whack it up to the max, which is 200, but I can personally say it's not. All that does is literally increase the file size. I personally haven't seen any difference to the eye uh, in increasing it to 200. Uh, and that's just my personal opinion with all of the examples I've exported and I've exported a lot of clips. So I've played around with all of the different numbers. Well, not all of them. I haven't like done one, two, three, four, five, but I've, 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 done, a, I've done a good amount of exports from like 10, 20, 50, 100, 150, 200. And I can safely say that my sweet spot is 50. Um, exporting at 50 and then 200, I personally can't see any difference. So I'm gonna play two clips side by side next to each other, and they're both the same clips. One has been exported at 50, one has been exported at 200. You tell me, if you can tell me, which one's which. I personally can't see any difference. Um, but now I'm gonna play the same two clips and one of them has been exported at one as the bitrate and the other at 50 at the bitrate. See if you can see the difference. I 
think it's pretty clear which one's which here. So, my sweet spot is 50. Um, if you look at the uh, file size with it at 50, this is a 10 second clip by the way, it's 66 megabytes, which is decent, it's, it's okay for a 10 second clip uh, at 50. If we whack it up to 200, it literally jumps up to like 264, like crazy numbers. Remember, this is a 10 second clip. So if you was exporting like a minute clip, you can only imagine it would be like gigabytes uh, for not really uh, any increase in the quality, just an increase in file size. So you might export in 60 or 70 and say you can see a slight difference. I don't know, maybe play around with it, but trust me, I've exported so many different variations and I, I'm confident in saying 50 is the sweet spot. Under that, you've got resolution. Uh, so if you wanted to upscale the clip to 4K, then change the first box to 3840, and then the second box will automatically change to 2160. And then you've got your frame rate. You can't change that, uh, obviously, but you can change that if you've shot the actual clip in 60, it will give you the option to export it in 60 or 30. But if you've shot in 30, like this clip is, you obviously can't export it in 60, so just leave that as it is. And then you've got encoding format. So this is obviously where it gets technical. Which one do you choose? H.264, H.265, and then you've got the option for ProRes 422. So, okay, what is ProRes 422, first of all? The simple way to think about ProRes is it's a file that is hardly compressed making it retain more information in each video. So when you export a video from the Insta360 Studio and then import it into another video editing software like Premiere Pro and then export it again, a H.264 file will essentially be compressed twice, whereas a ProRes file will only be compressed once. Insta360 have only recently added the option to export in ProRes, so all my exports so far have been exported in H.264, which I think personally have looked pretty good. If you've got the space on your computer and it's a more powerful system, then I would try to export in ProRes where you can, but exporting in H.264 is perfectly fine. So we've got this 10 second clip, which at the moment is 66 megabytes, and that is H.264. If I change it to ProRes, look at this. It literally jumps up to 787 megabytes. Remember, this is a 10 second clip. Let's not forget this. I'm going to show you again a clip side by side of uh, H.264 and ProRes. Can't see any difference that warrants the file size increase. Like, I just can't. So. I've exported everything so far in my cinematic videos and all of that using H.264 because this ProRes has only been a recent option and I think I will continue to do that. So don't stress, I would personally just stick to H.264 because for, for like the average user using this, you're just creating videos for YouTube, Instagram, whatever it is, and, and it's just fine, like the quality is perfect. And it was only a recent option that this has been given and it's been fine up to now. So why change what didn't need to be changed in my view? And the file size is more manageable. Um, so yeah, we're gonna keep this at H.264. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, and then we're gonna go back up to preset parameters and if we go to save, what we're gonna do is essentially save all of this as a preset. So then when you come to export future clips, uh, you won't have to change anything because it will already be saved. So just press save and then change the uh, preset name. So if we change this to 4K and then 50 uh, bit rate, and then we press save, you can see it's now saved that as a preset. And then if I come out of the export window and I go back into it, you can see it is already there. So we don't need to do or change anything. And then you're literally ready to press start export. And that is what I think are the best export settings for the Insta360 Studio.